In this video, we are going to do a guide for our ANOVA testing. So let's go ahead and read our scenario. So it says that Blake is working at a convenience store, and he's trying to determine if positive or negative magazines at the cash register actually promotes more sales. He decides to test three scenarios, one register with no magazines, one with positive magazines, and one with negative gossip magazines. He randomly uh, selects transactions at each tested register for a day, Blake wants to see which option performs the best for his clientele at the 0.05 significance level. Okay, so now that we've got that, uh, we need to do a few things. We need to do some checks. Uh, we need to see what data we're dealing with. But first of all, let's just kind of take a peek at our data. So if we open this up, we see that we have the amount spent at the register and what type of magazines that, that were there. So we've got no magazines, positive magazines, and negative magazines. So let's just go ahead and copy this and let's drop this into our commander. Double check to make sure it got in there and it looks like that it did just fine. All right, so our next question is what type of data are we dealing with? And what we are dealing with here is is numerical by categorical, where we are really interested in this numerical piece of data of how much money is being made, and we're comparing these different groups one to another. So the grouping variable of interest is going to be the, um, it's going to be the magazine uh, status, like if there were no magazines, uh, positive magazines, or negative magazines. So the response variable of interest is going to be the amount spent. That's what we're actually interested in. Uh, what is not a population of interest? Okay, so some of these are going to be populations of interest and some are not. So registers with um, positive magazines, that's a, that's of interest. Registers with negative magazines, that's of interest. With no magazines, that's also of interest. But with both positive and negative, that currently is not a population of interest. So the parameter of interest is going to be the true mean amount spent and can the variances be considered equal well we need to do a quick check so we can just run a quick summary statistics we can go to our basic statistics click on the descriptive statistics and we can go to the numerical summaries we can click on the by groups so we can say the magazine status right there and in the statistics we don't really need the iqr the quantiles but the standard deviation, the mean, standard error, those are good things to have. And if you look at the standard deviation, remember one of the requirements for ANOVA is that all of the standard deviations are close enough to be considered equal. And we see that, yes, they are. Okay, so we can say that, yes, variances can be considered equal. Oops, that doesn't look like I got that one. There we go. And it says, which equation should we be using, kind of which method? And we are going to be using ANOVA because we are comparing the means of more than two groups. So the distribution that we're going to be utilizing here is our F distribution. Now we need to check normality. So we need to see each of these groups being approximately normal. Doesn't have to be perfectly normal, but approximately normal. So if we do this quick check where we're checking the histograms, We'd say yes, and if we're looking at the QQ plot, uh, we can also say that is this essentially a straight line, and we can say yes as well. So let's see if we can produce these within our commander as well. So one thing that we can do is we can go to our graphs, and we can go click on histogram, and we can go click plot by group for our magazine status, and we can add in labels if we want. Um, we can come back in here and do this later, but I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And we notice that these are basically the same. The, the scaling on them is a little bit different, uh, but we can definitely get these histograms for each of those groups, so those look good. I'll get out of there. And then in order to get this QQ plot, I'm actually going to perform the... Uh, uh, the model first. So I'm going to go to st our statistics, I'm going to go to our means, and I'm going to go to our one-way ANOVA. We want to include the pairwise comparison of the means, and our groups are the magazine status, and the response is the amount spent. And so I can just go ahead and click OK, 
And then before I take a look at all of this, I actually want to go to our models, numerical diagnosis, oh sorry, not graphs, there we go, and our basic diagnostic plots. And once we have done that, we get this little QQ plot. And we see that it is, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Um, and as long as this QQ plot is essentially a straight line, uh, then we are doing really well. So this actually, yeah, this looks just about right. It looks like that we're on this straight line. And this straight line, basically, it's it, what it's doing is it's comparing the theoretically what we should see versus what we actually saw. And if it's a straight line, then basically it means that we got a, that our, um, the distributions are approximately normal. Okay, so the QQ looks like a straight line, so we're good. So we did our normality checks. Now, typically you only need to do one or the other of these, uh, but I did both just so that we'd have both of them. Now, if you notice the numbers here are kind of squished together, there's this handy dandy little magnifying glass. If you click on it, it'll pop up a magnified one that kind of lets you actually see really what's going on. Kind of a handy thing if the graphs are too small on whatever screen that you're on. Okay, so we can come down here and we can select our null and our, and our alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that the true mean amount spent at register for each group is the same. Um, that all of them, that basically whether or not they have magazines doesn't really matter. That's the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one uh, group's true mean amount spent at the register is different uh, than the others. That one is true. What's not true is all of the true means are different. That's not true. Only one combination really has to be different in order for us to get significant results. So our alpha level here is an alpha level of, uh, of 0.05. And one of the limitations with this ANOVA, if you notice, when we went to do our statistics means one way ANOVA is that it doesn't give us a, um, an ability to change our alpha level. Um, you can go in there and change it if you're, if you understand the coding. Uh, but for us, we're just going to keep it at this alpha level of 0.05. So scroll on down and we're going to go ahead and put 0 0.05. And now we need to collect some means. So we actually already did this. If we go back and we look at our sample means. So we have the no magazines. We could just go ahead and copy this guy. That's the mean for group one. And then we have the mean for group two. And we have the mean for group three. And what we want to know is are these differences that we see, are they significantly different or do we, are they just kind of there from, uh, from randomness and just from chance. So when we ran this and we put it into our ANOVA, uh, we get uh, we get our P our F value and our P value. The only problem that we have is that um, when we're grading it within my open math, we want four decimal places and it's only given us two. So let's force it to give us some more decimal places. What we can do is we can type in options. Oops, I didn't get that. There you go, options, digits, uh, equals, and we'll put in 12. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna run this guy again. So statistics means one way ANOVA, click okay. And now my F, I've got plenty of decimal places. So I'm just gonna copy this guy and I'll drop it in for my F. And then my P value is going to be zero with E negative 10. I mean, I could copy and paste that in. What the heck? We'll just do it, but round it to four decimal places. It's zero. Okay. So our P value is then less than our alpha. And one thing that we do here is the confidence interval plot is really useful. So our confidence interval plot, let me pull that up again, is this guy. So this 
Uh, let's see if I can make this big enough so that we can actually see. Oh, I guess it was. It won't do it. This is 3 minus 1. Or maybe it's 2 minus 1, 3 minus 1, and then 3 minus 2. Yeah, that, that's what it is. So this is all of the comparisons that are going on. And we see that if 0 is contained in the confidence interval, that it means that it's possible or it's likely that, uh, that these two different groups that we can't show them to be different. But if you notice, each of these groups, uh, their confidence interval that we find does not include zero. So in this case, all comparisons were found to be different from one another. So when I ask for the plot, this is what I want. You can just take, take a screenshot of it and upload it into the confidence interval plot spot. All right. Oops. Did not mean to do that. There we go. Okay, so our decision is we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so here we say that Blake collected sufficient evidence, and we've got this F2 and 171. Okay, let's figure out where those two numbers are. One is the, the degrees of freedom with respect to the groups. Let me go find that guy. Where are you? Okay, here we go, which is right here, this degrees of freedom uh, with the magazine status, that's where that two comes from. So once you produce this uh, ANOVA analysis, uh, this is kind of your bread and butter where you're getting a lot of the values from. So the degrees of freedom two goes right there. 171 is the, I think it, this is the sample size minus the total, uh, oh, what is this? Um, minus the degrees of freedom of the groups. Uh, it's either that or it's n minus the number of groups. Either way, it kicks it out for you. It's right here. It's just 171. And then we get this p-value that we, or not the p-value, the f statistic. And then from there, we get our p-value and we get alpha. And so we said Blake collected sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the true mean amount spent for registers with no magazines, positive magazines, and negative magazines are equivalent, and said to conclude that at least one pairwise comparison of the true mean amount spent was found to be different. That's great. And then I do have a warning is that due to some of the programming limitations that I have within my open math, the confidence intervals down here, they're going to be close, uh, but not dead on. Uh, and the p-values, I was only able to say that they're just less than whatever alpha is. So bear with me a little bit. That's just some limitations of the programming. What is correct is what you find in our studio. Okay, so here we say, go. So we said while conducting our two-key post hoc analysis, and that, that's the analysis type that, that we wind up doing. If you look in here, it says multiple comparison of means, two-key contrasts. There's actually a bunch of different ways that you can do these contrast, but the one that we're going to do is Tukey. So at the 95% confidence level, Blake found significant differences uh, with all pairwise comparisons where the positive magazine was found to have a true mean amount spent greater than both no magazines. Okay, and here's the confidence interval for that no, for the two being bigger than one. And so if we look at this guy, let me try to make this a little bit bigger so that we can actually see What's going on? Let's see if it'll pull it up for me. All right, let me just run this again, and let's see if I can't get it all into a single line. Okay, we'll click OK again. Okay, here we go. So, what's nice with this output, let me, let me try to show you this entire output kind of all at once. So this right here is actually the ANOVA analysis, and this tells us if there are any differences between any of the groups, and we said that that was significant. And then when we come down here, what we do is we see, okay, which of those differences are significant? They've got this little star um, way of looking at it. More stars, more significant. There's a little legend or code down here uh, that you can look at. And it gives us the estimate. So the baseline assumption is that each of these are equal to zero. And it gives us the estimate of how different we think that these are. If it's positive, then the first one is bigger than the second one. If it's negative, then the second guy down here is bigger than the first one. Okay. 
And then we get this T value and this P value that lets us know how significant they are. We come on down here and this is what we want, is we want these confidence intervals, these lower and these upper bounds. Okay, so with that, we can say that uh, where the positive magazines was found to have a true mean amount spent greater than both, um, than both no magazines, and we have this from... So here I calculated it to be point or 1.72. The actual one is 1.69 to 8.629. And over here it's 8.596. So it's close. Um, once again, what is in uh, your R studio is the correct one. And that's what I'll be grading you on on the report end of things. Uh, okay, so that was the first one that was different, and this was uh, the positive magazines is also greater than the negative magazines, where we have somewhere between 7 to 13 uh, greater, and once again, 7 to 13 greater. And also, no magazines was found to have a true mean amount spent greater than negative magazines, uh, somewhere between like uh, 2.1 to $8 greater. And that is really uh, how this kind of breaks down. So that's how you go through and do your uh, ANOVA testing. And when we go ahead and check our answers, we see that, yes, it went through and graded everything all right. Uh, the one part where it didn't grade me correctly was where I just I didn't upload this plot. So just make sure that you go ahead and upload uh, that, that plot as well. Um, I... I will go through and just give a brief glance at it um, just to make sure that you get it up there correctly. Uh, but just that is how we go about doing these ANOVA tests. They're, they're not crazy difficult. Our commander will do most of it for you. All we have to know is really how to read the output that it gives us. So good luck on your ANOVA testing.